Terry, very warm welcome to Wealth Talk today. Thank you. Thanks for having us, Chris. I appreciate it. Yeah, no problem at all. And uh, obviously, I'm sure there'll be some ties with Kevin with the uh, Northeast connection there. And yeah. uh, we've just been having a chat about all the things that have been going on over the last week or so. So exciting times. But we're here today to hear about how you have managed to double your business turnover in COVID. So really difficult period and some of the strategies perhaps that you can share with us today and our listeners. So looking forward to hearing that, Terry. But why don't you just start off by giving us a bit of background on yourself and your business? Thank you. Yeah, um, just to add to that, the talent, all the talent lives up north, Chris, in case you didn't know that. <laughs> it all lives up north. Um, but yeah, I'm Terry Blackburn. I'm 32. I'm from Newcastle upon Tyne. Uh, I've got a few different businesses, mainly around financial services, um, life insurance, mortgages, um, I'm picking the property as well, so I've got three property companies, three SPVs where we we'll buy, refurbish, and rent out properties. Um, yeah, really ambitious guy, father of two. Um, love my life, love my job, and that, that's that's me. Yeah, and then your company bespoke financial group. Uh, how mm-hmm. long has that been uh, running for? So seven and a half years. It was 2014 okay. um, June, I think it was. Yeah. So there's different branches of bespoke that are run by my friends. Uh, I run Newcastle, my best mate runs Bespoke Teesside. So collectively, we're the number one life insurance brokers in the country. Uh, Last month, for example, we did 1,200 life insurance policies as a business. So that's 1,200 families we've helped with life insurance. So anybody who knows that that industry, you know, that's quite far ahead of the competition. So, So, yeah. And uh, I was just, you know, having another look at your website and reading your mission statement. And it's really clear to see that, you know, the core values shine through. And, and definitely we're going to hear that from you today as we speak further. And uh, I think you've really embedded that throughout your whole team as well. And hence the success that you're having, Terry. Mm-hmm. Yeah, no, I appreciate you saying that. Thank you. And I'd like to think so. Yes, I, I'm a big believer in team culture and and ethics and morals and values have to be passed down not just from the leaders of the business but to every member of staff from the administrators to the sales people every layer of management they need to have the same values um for sure um it's imperative i feel for a big business and to scale a big business and be successful i think in any industry i think that, that's accurate yeah so you mentioned there you know the business been running for seven and a half years and and last year during covid you managed to increase the turnover from around seven hundred and seventy thousand to 1.5 million so you know impressive results there terry so where where does this entrepreneurial bug come from um i can't really pinpoint a certain time or you know my my parents aren't entrepreneurs I don't have any entrepreneurs in the family um I can't really pinpoint a certain time or a turning point but I've always knew that I was going to do something big I, I don't know why I don't want to come across as arrogant there by the way at all because I'm anyone who knows us would say that yeah I've just always knew that I was going to achieve something big and I've always believed that I think when you believe something that's the starting point if anything anyway you've got to believe in it but I always just knew and I'm very very ambitious and I'm very very competitive um, and in sales is a competitive environment so I, as soon as I got into sales I just loved it whether that was being the top salesman in the in the country which I was to then having the biggest business it's all it's all competition right and, and I'm, I'm just a bit like that in general um, so yeah, there wasn't a, to answer your question, there wasn't a, a specific point. I think it's just in me to be this way. Mm. Um, so before we dive into the details then, Terry, I mean, at the age of 32, how much do you put your success, your current success down to just mindset and personal development as opposed to actual business skills and business acumen and, and, and knowledge around you know how a, a business works? Probably the 80 20 rule, isn't it? it? The Pareto principle, I think, probably it's 80% mindset, 20% your actual actions. Um, obviously, you've got to you've got to back things up with huge action. I take huge action every day. I'm up early, I work late, five days a week. Every it used to be seven, but it's it's five days now. You've got to back that that up with action. But I do also believe that my mindset is is what kept us ahead of the competition. Yeah. Um, yeah, I, I, I definitely believe that. If, if upstairs isn't right, then downstairs won't work. Mm-hmm. That's not a funny analogy. <laughs> you know what I mean? It's all in the mind. <laughs> yeah. 
Okay, so let's start looking at some of the strategies then. So what were some of the things, let's let's go back to sort of pre-COVID. So business was going well, right? You know, um, but obviously then things completely turned on their head. So how did that actually impact you as a business and what did you do? Yeah, so, so first of all, pre-COVID, we were, you know, life insurance and mortgage sales, we were face to face. So we generally went to our customers' houses or their places of work to see them for an appointment. Um, it was probably 90% face to face, 10% over the phone. So obviously instantly, we weren't allowed to go out and do face to face. So you have two options at that point as a business. You furlough everybody and feel sorry for yourself and they all will just wait until it blows over. Or I remember speaking to one of my, my friends actually in London who um, had given some great advice. He went, in 2008, when we had that last recession, you had to work twice as hard. And it was something along those lines, I had this conversation. I just remember sitting in my living room thinking, right, well, this is going to, I'm going to work three times as hard as I've ever worked, and I'm going to make this into a positive. So I got everyone set up on Zoom, as everybody did, and we just marketed like hell, and we just pushed even harder. I pushed recruitment, I pushed, pushed sales, brand awareness, everything, three times more than what I've ever done before. Um, because you only have two choices. You you either do it or you don't, don't you? You either push forward or you, or you stay where you are. But if you stay where you are, you go backwards. So I just made a conscious decision to push even harder in every part of my business. And that's kind of what, what happened. So that now, even st- it's probably slipped a little bit, but, but pr- when we're in the lockdowns, we were obviously 100% over the phone instead of 10% over the phone. And even now when we're coming out of it and we're allowed to do face-to-face, we're probably... I probably say as a whole business, probably 70-30. So 70% over the phone, only 30% face-to-face. Because what we've found is you can help more people. We can speak to more clients. You can do more appointments in a day. Hence, help more people, make more money, make more sales, business, you know. You can do more when it's over the phone. The downsides of that are relationship building, rapport building isn't the same, obviously, over the phone as it is in person. So... The way we got around that is injecting your personality down the phone, your tone of voice, standing up when you're on the phone, um, getting your words out crisply and cleanly, up and down with your tone of voice, enthusiasm, telephone technique training. We do that all the time. Um, and we've actually, you know, we done 1.5 last year, April to April. We'll do two and a half this April to April. So we're growing at such a rate now. Um, and it's that, it's that, yeah, I think all of that is underpinned by mindset because I believe that we'll work three times as hard, we'll adapt, we'll evolve, and we'll go ahead of the competition. And, and that's kind of what we've done. Um, so that mindset, you know, clearly, clearly you have that mindset. How, you mentioned training there. So how do you go about recruiting? And I know when we spoke previously, you said that almost, you know, everyone in the team is like friends or friends of friends. And, you know, mm-hmm. how do you instill that same spirit into all of them? Mm-hmm. Um, a few different ways I think it's, well it starts at the recruitment first of all um, If even if they are amazing at sales they've got the right personality type the outgoing and all these things and they know a lot of people so they'll do well in this environment but they're not not right fit for, they're not a right fit for the business I wouldn't take them on even if they were unbelievable at sales perfect for this environment as in this industry this type role selling life insurance but they didn't click with the team i wouldn't take them on so they've, they've got to have had they've got to have, they have to have the right values they've got to you know i believe one one wrong person in this business could be cancerous and spread it can cause an atmosphere it can you know and some people might not want to come here some people might leave just on the basis of some other people so it starts with the recruitment and then after that, it comes down to the regular training. So we do motivational Mondays, where every Monday I'll stand up, do a big sales training seminar on Zoom or in the office, and I motivate the hell out of everybody. Um, and I do, yeah, everyone raves about these sessions. I should probably try and charge for them. <laughs> um, but I, I love doing that. I love speaking really passionately and, and full of enthusiasm. And, and I am helping these people. I help my staff make more money and develop in the career they then in turn help more families with life insurance and mortgages and then the business wins as well so it, it, it obviously all it all clicks together um but i motivate them regularly we do loads of things like i know we spoke prior to this this chat about team culture i think too many people think 
a team culture is saying good morning and they take them out on the drink at Christmas once a year. Like that in team culture that we go out once a month, we're in the office all the time, we speak daily, we do loads of team building stuff. You know, we've got WhatsApp groups for all the all the team where everyone chats, everyone shares good news, share the positivity, we celebrate people's birthdays, everyone gets the birthdays paid off work. You know, just I just do I go over and above for the team because if I help the team, they help the business. And that and must, it's just, yeah, that must lead to you know word of mouth in both ways, right? Amongst the team, so they're telling other people, hey, this is a great place to work, right? So that just self perpetuates more and more people kind of wanting to be part of that. But then also on on the client side of things, you know, I, I imagine a lot of your clients are referring people to you as well. Yeah, I mean, the, the whole business is based on referrals. So we don't do any paid advertisement. So we don't do pay-per-click campaigns. We don't do SEO campaigns and all that nonsense. Well, it's not nonsense. Um, and all that type of stuff, that, that type of marketing. All we do is post on Facebook and we use our people to get more people. So our team goes and sees someone. We get an average eight referrals per customer. We will then sign up generally 50% of those referrals. So if I go and sell, if I sell to you, which I might after this call actually, I'm gonna ask if you've got life insurance. Um, so if you give me eight referrals, I'll sell to four of those. Those four give me eight each, and then it, it spirals like that. And that's why I take people on who who are well known and who know a lot of people and who've got a big network, because I don't provide them with leads. They have to hunt for their own leads, and that's why having a good network is important. But going back to what you said, yeah, it's all referrals. Um, I think that's part of the reason why we've been so successful is a lot of people don't know how to do it. They shy away from referrals. They wait for their phone to ring, whereas we ring other people. We're hunters. Um, so, yeah, and, 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 and yeah, you're right, the enthusiasm and everything else, it, it does. It makes people want to refer us because the way we treat the customers. Yeah, and and obviously that's a, a hugely important part. What else would you say is is the USPs of the company? Because there's plenty of insurance, you know, brokers out there, plenty of mortgage brokers out there. So, why do clients come to you? Um, a lot of it's it's because it's a referral. So, you know, again, I I went I come to see you. You pass me on Kevin. When I ring Kevin up, I'll say it's something we do for Christian and his family and lots of his friends in such and such an area. And he's asked us to see if I can help you too. So if you've got five or 10 minutes now, I can talk you through what we do. So I'm using the, the influence of other people when I ring that next person down the referral chain. So when I speak to Kevin, I'll mention Christian, but then if Kevin refers us to John, when I speak to John, I'll say it's something we do for Kevin and Christian and such and such and such and such. So people buy off the influence of others, right? Yeah. Um, and that, 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 that's how. Yeah. And it's off the influence of others. And, and on your website, you've got hundreds of reviews and reading through them, they're always mentioning personal names of the people they've spoken yeah, yeah. to. So I imagine at the end of every call, you're asking as well, can you, you know, leave a review if you've had a good experience? And again, that's just really putting out the, um, the social proof, isn't it? Definitely. I think reviews are, are, are key these days. You know, people will look you up on Google, on Facebook, the, the will. It's an educated marketplace now. It's not the days where people just walk down the street and walk into the mortgage brokers on the high street anymore. I truly believe those days are gone. I, I believe people will ask the friends for a recommendation. Who did you use for your mortgage or your life insurance? Or they'll see some review or they'll check you out on Facebook or they'll use that search bar on, on Facebook, Life Insurance Brokers Newcastle or whatever it may be. Reviews are key. People are key. Just just like a bad review probably is 10 to, you know, what do they say? A negative review is 10 times more powerful than a positive, I think they say. Um, but yeah, reviews are key, man. The yeah. key. Yeah. And how many members have you got in the team at the moment, Terry? Um, sales staff. Mm -hmm. Um, just in the Newcastle office, we'll have 33. Collectively, across the whole of Bespoke, there's 120-ish. Um, changes all the time, obviously, because we're recruiting like mad. I've got about, I think I've got about nine people doing training at the moment to join just the Newcastle branch. Um, that's another key to the success. It, it's never-ending recruitment. It's never-ending because the second you think, I've made it, I've got the best team, I've got the biggest team, there's someone snapping at your heels always so I never get complacent with recruitment I'm always looking for good people 
And if someone's got the right personality type and they're a nice person, they've got integrity and morals, and they've, they know a lot of people and they've got contacts, I can teach them how to do this. Um, so yeah, always recruiting, always. Okay, so so obviously we've talked about the increase in, in the, the number of team members, so therefore more sales. So that's certainly helped with the turnover uh, during that COVID period. Were there any other strategies, any other things that you implemented which have helped you to get to that figure? Um, no, no, I don't think so. It was it was literally just more of the same. And this is actually a good point that, that hopefully people can relate to is sometimes I feel in business, people look for that magic, the magic thing to do, the magic marketing strategy, the, the special source, the, you know, it's something that they're going to do that's going to... Sometimes it's not something new. Sometimes it's just more of the fundamentals, the basics. Um, and that's all we've done. We just done the basics consistently, turned the volume right up, and ramped everything up um, in every way. And, and that, that, yeah, there's no. Sometimes the answer's right in front of you, and sometimes you just need to do what what you're meant to do. You know. I think, uh, I think that's a very good lesson actually, because it's so easy to complicate business, right? And there's so many things that you can do. Obviously, on the internet, you've got so many people telling you all these different things, um, but. At the end of the day, there's some very key uh, KPIs, right? Um, so how do you focus on that within the business? You seem like you're definitely the creator, the driver of the business. Do you, are you good at keeping a check on these numbers or do you have someone in the business to help with that? Yeah, so so I've got a, a, a really good support system around us. So I've got a really good t- backing team, which is I think, again, is really, really key. That's in the property business and the, the financial services business. Um, I am all about the vision and the motivation and the energy and the ideas. But we we, we are big on KPIs also. So um, sales is just numbers. A lot of businesses is just numbers. If you drill it down and you take the emotion out of it, it's just a numbers game. So we focus on obviously client acquisition, how many clients you get. We'll focus on what the client value is. We'll focus on the conversions in terms of if you get this many referrals, how many will you convert? Out of those, how many you convert, how much does that generate in income? Which we can then really break that down. So I've got it with my team, literally how much per phone call they make. Even if the client says yes or no, we can work it out how much each phone call makes. Um, so I'm really big on KPIs. We um, we do administrator of the month, broker of the month, mortgage broker of the month, life of, life insurance broker of the month. We also do a quality award of the month. So I've got a customer care manager who rings all the clients to make sure they're happy with the service. If there's anything else they can do for we can do for them. Is there anything else that we want to improve on or that they feel we could improve on? So I, I've incentivized them on sales figures, but also on quality. Um, which is a KPI. I am big on KPIs. I certainly don't confess to being numbers, you know, one of these whizzes on numbers. I know me numbers. I know how much you make and I know, you know, I, I know me numbers, but I'm certainly not accountant book keeping type I need help with stuff like that no well we, uh, we give all of our members uh, an assessment it's called wealth dynamics and it shows that people are, obviously have their strengths in different areas some are very creative some are connectors some love the details and you just got to have the team right who love all of those things working together and that's the magic the magic source so yeah. the business we've talked about Terry so what are you mm-hmm. now doing in terms of your own wealth building so how are you using some of those business profits and, and kind of building out into other wealth building pillars um so mainly mainly property so there's three spvs that i've got um i think just under 40 units i've got at the moment um so i do an intercompany loan from bespoke into the spvs um to fund the purchases pretty much everything that i do is brr so you buy refurbish refinance model um i've got a great team of builders um that i've worked with for quite a while um so yeah, so it's it's all about property for me. I love property. I'm just as passionate for property as I am for life insurance. Um, again, that, that going back to KPIs, that is a complete KPI numbers game property, which far too many people miss. There's too much emotion in property. They view a property and think, oh, it's lovely. It would rent really well. This that doesn't you know stop getting tied to it, and then they over bid, they over pay for stuff. You know all this craziness that's going on right now bidding war stuff going for huge amounts over asking it's just pure numbers property let the numbers guide you 
focus on a yield or a return that you want and, and that's it. But to answer your question, yeah, it's all property. Love property and I believe that I'm gonna go on to big things in property. Yeah. Uh, so. Yeah, well, I think you know one of our uh, previous guests uh, on episode 90, we had Ryan Luke. And uh, yeah, yeah. Ryan, yeah, no, Ryan lives not too far away from you, I believe. And um, yeah. the title of that episode was Adopting a Thousand Property Mindset. And uh, and again, I know that we were chatting previously and you said, you know, start off small. You have the vision initially, right? 10 properties, three grand a month. And, you know, you're pushing that now. So I guess your vision is expanding towards that thousand property mindset, right? Yeah, hundred percent. I think a lot of like we spoke the other day. Um, a lot of people, it's ten properties initially, isn't it? Right, and that that's great, and that's anybody who gets to that fair play to them. That that's still a big target and a good a good thing to do for you and your family to get the ten properties is an achievement. But when you get there, it's like right, what next? Twenty, then what next? And then all of a sudden, you your goals change and your perception of everything change. Your perception of what you can achieve changes. It becomes almost a little bit of a game if it's not too much about financials. So, so I'm just really ambitious, me. So I'm thinking, right, well, my target is 100 properties by age 35. That's three years. I'll do that. But now I'm starting to look for them and think, right, well, 45 or 1,000. But I know for an absolute fact, when I'm 40 something, I'll be thinking, right, what's next? And there'll be so I, I just have to keep moving the ball, me, because progression is happiness and it just it keeps you what else are you going to do yeah. like yeah. you need something to do don't you absolutely yeah and so i guess in summary then terry um mm-hmm. you've broken through the million pound you know barrier you're now broken through the two million pound barrier um what would be some kind of top tips for budding entrepreneurs aspiring entrepreneurs who are you know kind of earlier in their journey um if you look back the things that have really been the key differentiators in your success what would those be um, so advice, I would think a great line that I, I think it was a guy called Brad Sugars. He's the action coach guy. I think you've, you've got people in your uh-huh. thing, yeah. haven't you? With him. Yeah. So his definition of a business, I'm sure it was him I watched at a seminar in Harrogate, um, where he said the definition of a business is a commercial and profitable enterprise that runs and grows without you. So if you're an entrepreneur in business, you need to change your mindset as in the bit, if, if it's all you, you're self-employed, for example, and you don't have a team, you've got a small team, you're doing everything, you don't have a business, that's a job. And that was a real light bulb moment for me a few years back, because I was the business, it was all me, I was doing bits of admin, I was doing all the management, I was doing everything. But you you can only go so far with that, and you're exchanging your time for money, so it, it, it's advice would be to a proper business, you need a team. And yes, you, you, I've been there where you think, oh, but I've got to shell out a salary. And they'll never do it as good as me. Everyone thinks that, right? But even if they do it 80% as good as you, that that's good enough. And you you can then free up your time to do other things and focus on other parts of the business. Working on the business instead of in it, all that stuff is is great advice, definitely. Um, other advice, if you've got a team, I think that, that a huge turning point in my business was culture, was just getting this culture right. Last year was definitely a turning point. Lockdown was a turning point when I decided to work more, have more interaction with the team, have more Zoom meetings and all these type things. Um, so team culture is is so, so important because you can have a huge business and it can be like a deck of cards if you've got, if the foundations aren't right and there's the wrong people in the wrong positions, the wrong bums on seats, it can all fall. Um, so team culture will be a big one and, and um, goals as well. I know it's a simple concept, Right, everyone writes goals at New Year's Eve on the for New Year's resolutions, but nobody really sticks to them. Goals aren't just once a year; they should be all the time. You know, stick them up on your. I've got affirmation cards all over my house. My mates think I'm like mental, and there's like just <laughs> quotes everywhere. I can't escape it. It's on my laptop, my phone, my office, my home office, office here. That it's everywhere, and I, and I, I'm a bit obsessed with it. <laughs> I do. I do you're, think you're hardwired that. for success. <laughs> yeah, I, I just can't escape it. Every single day, bar none, I listen to audio, I read, I write down my goals, write down my affirmations. I, this is my. It's my life. Um, it's, no, it's not my life because business isn't my life. I've got children and partners and things. Um, partners, partner, <laughs> one partner. I say partner. I say one partner. Oh, I love to be Louise. Um, so yeah. So it, just going back, goals is. Um, Goals is is so, it's so important. Mm. 
it's so important yeah. and then just the right people around you right they've got to support you with that as well oh definitely I've had the wrong partner before um, and that does if you're doing amazing at work your career's booming you make loads of money you're enjoying it you've got a great team and you come home to negativity and stress and hassle and blah, blah. It, it dampens all of this so you've got to have that right and you can achieve more if, if the home life's right and I've learned that lesson for sure. There is my partner at the moment, so supportive. She's in business as well. She's got property as well. She owns an estate agent. She's very switched on. That that was probably a good turning point for my career as well when I when when I got with the Reese because she spurs me on. Mm. Instead of coming home getting, you know, stop buying properties, Terry. You don't need any more properties. <laughs> why, why are you recruiting more people? You don't need a bigger business. Now it's like, well, come on, what are you doing? Yeah. Buy some more, you know. Yeah. That, that, that's really important. Well, we hear that term, don't we, a lot, work-life balance, you know, but uh, as you say, if it's out of balance, then uh, absolutely can have an impact. So um, we're recording this on video, Terry, as we always do, and uh, in the background, I can see Rags to Riches show. And so yeah. tell us a little bit about your podcast. Yeah, yeah. So um, I just thought, to be honest, I've listened to your podcast loads. I do, talking, going back to what I said, self-development, audio books, audible. I listen to it all the time. So I listen to Audible as well as, as podcasts. I listen to them all the time. I really enjoy them. And I quite like the, the interview style opposed to just listening to somebody talk for seven hours about something. All of that's good. I just like the podcast thing. Um, learned lots from them previously. Um, I do know a lot of people. So I just thought, why not? It doesn't really cost anything to set one up. Um, but honestly, what I've found is I'm getting... M- I'm actually getting massively inspired by me chatting to people. It's networking as well, which is great. The phrase that your network is your net worth and all that. Um, I've had some deals from it. I've had the exposure I've got from it. I didn't kind of expect, I haven't marketed it apart from on my Instagram. People in Australia, people from America, people come bringing deals to us, angel investors. I'm like, oh my God, this is like, I'm really enjoying this. And it's help. it's actually helping with business as well. Um, so, but the show is actually just about people's interesting stories about people going from rags to riches or just nothing to something that can be in your health. It can be in your fitness because you could be really overweight and to get really fit. They have a story to tell. It's been going from being skinned to really wealthy and just to, you know, people who've turned their life around. Um, is what the show is about and it seems to be going down really well so great well I'm sure some of our listeners will be plugging into that as well and um, Terry it's been a real pleasure talking with you today thank you for sharing some of the ways that you've gone about doubling your business in COVID well done for that and obviously you're on a meteoric rise to success I can see that and uh, I'm sure we will invite you back on again in the future to share some more ideas with our listeners No, I'd love that, Chris. Thank you so much for having us on. And um, yeah, thank you.